The royal family here will pump money into the club if the deal goes through. They will do it for the right reasons and they will not interfere with the running, the day-to-day -day running of Liverpool Football Club. People think that he sits in his palace and you don't see him. The guy drives round in his own car, you see him every day. Local guys have his picture all over the cars. You know, no one sees Prince Charles's picture all over the cars at home. But if, you know, if my ruler was buying me a free villa and free rent, etc., I'd have his picture every He's looking after his people. There's no, there's no like Labour Party, there's no Conservative. There's three brothers, they rule and you do as they say. And if you're not happy, don't live here. I believe they would not in any way uh, 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 damage or go against any traditions that uh, Liverpool uh, Football Club might have. And I believe the essence is to enhance the quality, uh, provide the club with what it needs and to collectively uh, grow together. DIC, Dubai International Capital, has under management at the moment about five and a half billion dollars. Um, that's about uh, two and three quarter billion pounds. So it's an awful lot of money. Um, if it comes off, then the Liverpool bid would, uh, would probably be somewhere around seven or eight percent of their total portfolio. So it will be a very important part of the cog. Not only are you just back from Dubai, but I mean, you used to live there, didn't you? So no better man to tell us what this deal will mean for Liverpool Football Club. Yes, well, outsiders might be expecting a clash of cultures, but really, if you're an expatriate in Dubai, you've got quite a free lifestyle. Saying that, as I said in the piece, the sheikhs do like to be in control. Just before we got there, a local newspaper was censured simply for reporting the amount of traffic jams. Yeah. So they do keep a tight rein on everything. Um, but for Liverpool, uh, this could be the deal of the decade. I really do believe that. So much so that I think we may be seeing the beginning of a shift in the power base of Northwest football from possibly Manchester United to Liverpool. You mean because of the money that's available? Absolutely, on the yes. Well, that, that assumes, of course, that, that you can buy success. Well, it does, and I think Chelsea have proved that you can buy success. Well, but have they? Because it's now beginning to come apart at the seams at Stamford Bridge but because of money. It is, because Roman Abramovich does have limited resources. Sheikh Mohammed literally has money to burn. So you see Liverpool buying up all the great players of the world. He's a winner. He won with his horse racing stables, Godolphin. He will not finish second, and he will pay what it takes. No matter how many articles you read or how many pictures you see, they don't quite capture the enormity and the energy of Dubai. It is a physical manifestation of Arab oil wealth set in concrete, glass and steel. A place so rich and ambitious that it is changing the geography of the world as a business center, transportation hub and tourist destination. A 21st century city at the crossroads of a new world. Skyscrapers rise in clusters, man-made islands rise from the sea, and entire neighborhoods with hundreds of office buildings and apartments rise from the sand. And it is all the vision of one man, Sheikh Muhammad bin Rashid Al Maktoum. This is where we're standing now. All oh, this is nothing. 2000... 2000. 2000. January 2000. Seven what, years what? ago. Yes. This was desert. And look now, all of this here. What are you trying to do here? What do you want this place to be? I want it to be number one. Not in the region, but in the world. What do you mean number one in the world? In everything. High education, health, uh, housing. Just making my people the highest way of living. At 57 years old, he is one of the richest people in the world. A member of the Maktoum family, which has ruled here for nearly two centuries. He's a former Air Force pilot and an avid horseman who competes in cross-country endurance races and is one of the largest breeders of thoroughbred racehorses in the world. By Western standards, his marital situation is a little complicated. He's married to Princess Haya, the daughter of the late King Hussein of Jordan, but he also has another wife who is rarely seen in public. He is frequently described as a workaholic and, as we found one morning, always in motion. I'm just doing my normal thing, which is, you know, You'd like to stay on your feet? Yeah. <laughs> Where's your security detail? I don't have a security. You just walk please. around by yourself? Yeah. He's famous for dropping in unannounced at construction sites and government offices to see how things are going. We'll get in this car, huh? This is my car. All right, fine. I will drive. Okay. He uses his cars, his mobile offices. So you travel by yourself all the time? Most of the time I travel by myself, yes. 
It seemed like almost everyone in Dubai knew the car and who was driving. Uh, yeah, done. But you see the whole area is going down, growing there. There is a little bit of Donald Trump in it, at least when it comes to showmanship. You know this building up there? That strange-looking building on the left is one of the world's tallest indoor ski slopes. Outside, it may be 120, but inside, it feels like the Alps. They are set and ready to run. Then there is the Dubai World Cup, showcasing the fastest horses in the world, running for the world's largest purse. Not to mention the most luxurious and expensive hotel in the world, the Burj Al Arab, where the cheapest room is $2,000 a night. Why do you want everything to be the biggest, the tallest? Steve, why not? Why not? If you can't have it in New York, what can we have it here? Why are you in such a hurry? Most people would try and do all of this in a lifetime, not in five years. I want, I want my people to live better life now to go to the high school now to go to the good uh, health care now not after 20 years another is Sultan Ahmed bin Sulaim chairman of Dubai world who also runs a significant part of the Sheikh's business empire I think he looks at Dubai what does Dubai need what is missing in Dubai and when he thinks something missing we're gonna do it Seven years ago, Sheikh Mohammed decided what Dubai needed was more waterfront property and beaches for all those tourists who were going to come. Dubai only had 60 miles of coastline, so he ordered Sultan to create more. After two months, I came to him and showed him this is a picture of a perspective, an idea of an island. He said, how much beach is going to give us? I said, seven kilometers. He said, why not 70? And I know him. This is his way. You know, he's, he's always asked you the impossible, not, not, not what you are able, what you cannot do. So Sheikh Mohammed gave you the land and told you to start building? He gave us the water. He gave you the water. <laughs> the water. You had to make the land. We have to make the land. Business consultants told him the project was unfeasible. But with no environmental regulations to stop him, Sultan began dredging 100 million cubic yards of sand from the Persian Gulf, along with 7 million tons of rock, to form a man-made island in the shape of a palm. It more than doubled the coastline of Dubai and created waterfront condos and homes for 150,000 people, not including 35 hotels. Most people, if they brought in a business consultant and they told them this is a terrible idea, it's not going to work, they wouldn't do it. Most people, yes, but not us. I must tell you, Your Highness, that there are some members on your team who from time to time had doubts. I won't name them, but they looked and they said, after you told them what you wanted, they said, this is impossible. They thought that you were crazy, if that you it would never work. Yeah, if you don't want to name them, I can't name them. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are sitting over there on the couch. He owns one of the world's top breeding and thoroughbred racing operations. The morning we were there, he was selecting horses for races all over the world and some of the world's most expensive thoroughbreds were on display. Look, here they come into the finish. So, the one with the colors, I told you he won. Yeah. These are the best, the best horses in the world. What is it you love so much about this? Uh, it's my hobby. It's, you know, the horse in my blood. Frankie, how is that finish? You like it? Touched out really well. Of the horses that we've seen today, what are they worth? Each one of these, he won. What do we think you win would be worth 50, 60 million dollars? There was one horse in particular that the Sheikh was interested in. If you look, they are there. Mm -hmm. Now they're building up. I expect this to pass this, otherwise I'd be disappointed. And this day he was not disappointed. No one likes to disappoint the Sheikh, not even his horses. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see.